And this is some kind of a special part of this uh, conference, which is like the, the pre-registration challenge part of the conference. So as some of you might know, there has been a collaboration between MCES and GESES, one of the representatives of GESES is standing right next to me. And these two organizations have conducted the MCES GESES pre-registration challenge. And the, the purpose of this challenge was to promote the institution of pre-registration. Um, to make it more public, uh, popular and more visible within our disciplines. And um, as Arthur Lupia has pointed out yesterday, uh, they also conducted some kind of pre-registration challenge, which uh, he kind of considered as a failure. And uh, actually, we had Lupia on board when we planned this, which it was not very encouraging because uh, he tried to help us uh, getting funds and he, he said like, ah, oh, it's a little problematic because experiences were not so good. So <laughs> we weren't sure how this would turn out. Um, and he said like yesterday they received like 60 um, submissions. And I mean, these are like very prominent scholars and they had collaborations with APSR and stuff. And we received 40 and we're not so prominent, I think. And we do not have, I'm not sure, but I guess we're not. And so we received 40 pro, um, um, submissions and many of them really good. So we actually consider our challenge a success. This is not a kind of comparison that I'm trying to make, but it's just that maybe it shows, and this is my takeaway from this, that just the instrument of pre-registration over the years has become more visible and more better known to the scholars. So scholars are more open to participating in this challenge. So this is, I think uh, a good a good sign for pre-registration in, in general. So like the three best of these uh, 40 submissions we have selected and they will be presented here. But as I told you, uh, Caitlin Johnson unfortunately cannot be here today. She's still part of this pre-registration challenge, but she cannot present today. Uh, so what will happen is just like, we're gonna have like ordinary um, presentations and questions and answers. And then afterwards, we actually don't want to make this competition part of it like so strong. It's uh, we we are going to select afterwards uh, like the the organizers of the conference together with the Gizis people um, one of these uh, submissions, and they will get either funds or uh, free survey time in the Gizis panel in order to conduct their study. And they will present here what they want to do, and they have uh, pre-analysis plans, and then they they can conduct their analyses. And as I mentioned, um, these uh, people who uh, submitted had uh, two options. They could either, either go for financial support, which was 2,000 euros, or free uh, GESIS time, and or free survey time in the GESIS panel. And this is now my segue to you, um, because uh, this is a, a survey, I think you will talk a little bit about it now. Um, the GESES panel, uh, which is conducted here in Germany um, by the GESES Institute, and we will hear a, a talk by uh, Tobias Heinke, and then we will have the two substantive talks following. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I will just give you a brief introduction into the open science efforts of uh, GESES and the GESES panel. Um, as a little disclaimer, maybe, uh, in the beginning, uh, I just started at GESES uh, a few months ago, so there might be a lot of stuff I do not know yet, but please ask me anyway afterwards if you have any questions. Um, so in case you're not familiar with GESES, the full name is the Leibniz Institute for the Social Sciences. Um, we are an infrastructure institute based here in Mannheim and Cologne for the social sciences, and we prov provide research-based services for the entire research cycle. So whether it is consulting in the beginning when you're planning a study, uh, pre-testing of your questionnaires, um, help with the data collection, we collect a lot of data ourselves, um, the data analysis support, and of course also um, archiving and uh, registration. Um, and uh, the next sentence I put on its own slide from the uh, European Commission Open Science Monitoring, GESES has a tradition of engaging with open science principles uh, which I, of course, really like the sentence. Um, and I would like to show you uh, why I think this sentence is very much justified. So there are a number of services GESES offers uh, that you should consider uh, open science -y. Um For example, we have the um, open access repository, more than 50,000 entries. 
the SSOAR, which is still growing uh, every day. Um, we have our DBK, our database, which is curated, including um, the, the readme files and all the information about data um, that is stored there. We have our self-archiving possibility, Datorium, where you can archive your own data and your analysis scripts. Um, uh, this is interesting for Vernon, I see here, yeah. We have uh, Gaze's notebooks. You can upload your Jupyter notebooks and run them there. You can put in your GitHub link. It's in a beta version right now, but feel free to test it and give feedback on the people who are developing it. Um, we have our collection of scales, more than 250 instruments that I just described there. We have our survey guidelines, where we have hands-on guidelines on um, different questions you might have before you're starting the study or when you're analyzing the study. A few pages on questionnaire design, on face-to-face -face interviews, on interview training, um, which we will hopefully soon um, add some more open science-y uh, guidelines as well. Um, but still, Gezes thought, well, that's good, good start, but we could do more. So um, there was a open science strategy that was um, written. It's still not public, but it's uh, still uh, finalized. Um, and open science is a central strategic goal of Gezes. Uh, four pillars, uh, open source. For example, the database catalog software is open source. It can be used by anybody who's interested uh, in using the software for um, data archiving. Uh, open access, I guess I gave a good example uh, that uh, open access is important. Um, open data, of course, a lot of data is open. Uh, and the fourth pillar, which I'm mostly involved in, is called open methodology. So the research process and the analysis process, process should be open as well. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, oh yeah, and Gezes uh, had a job for an open science enthusiast, and they found one, and he's standing right in front of you now. So my main task is being enthusiastic about open science, um, which I hope I'm doing a good job at, and I'm trying to do a bit more than just being enthusiastic um, and doing some actual work as well. Um, but I got the chance, I'm now at the Gezes panel, uh, which I'll talk about now, where I can just try out different open science things. So just in case you're not familiar with the Gezes panel, it's a probability-based uh, mixed-mode access panel with about 4,500 participants. We have, uh, every two months, we have a new wave of questionnaires, so six questionnaires per year. Um, it's based on a, a random sample from the German popula popular population index. Um, we have web-based as well as mail-based uh, questionnaires. Uh, and any researcher can submit a questionnaire um, and through a review process um, might get a time as part of the GESIS panel. Um, we do think we are already quite open science at the GESIS panel. So um, it's accessible for all academic researchers. Um, the data is provided for secondary data analysis without any embargoes. So as soon as the data are cleaned up, are anonymized, etc. They are available to you. You can access them. Um, we also have a teaching purpose files, so we call them campus files, a um, bit shorter questionnaire or data files that are open. You can just download them for just trying to figure out how this works. You can use it for teaching, uh, maybe develop some ideas that you can then use uh, when you access the, the scientific use file. Um, there is a lot of really nice and rich data in these files, which we cannot share and send you. So we do have in Cologne, and hopefully in Mannheim soon as well, uh, our secure data center where you can just sit down, uh, run your analyses that are maybe locations are uh, in there. Um, and um, then we, of course, check the analyses, whether they include any uh, sensitive information. And you get your results, and you can write your paper on it. Um, and we also already try to be as transparent as possible when it comes to the collection of the data. A wave report for every wave we have every two months. There's a report coming out saying what we did, how many respondents, um, how the the invitation letter looked like, how the response letter looked like, etc. A very extensive code book uh, with all the variables, uh, which is quite long. It's getting more longer because we well, run a study every two months, um, and we're part of the Open Probability Based Panel Alliance with international panels. We can also do comparative analyses, and all of them provide the data for secondary data analysis. Still, we think, well, we can do better. Um, and I can try out different things there. So what I'm doing is I'm introducing open source tools 
R, R Markdown, LaTeX, Python, etc. Uh, maybe making the rave report automatic using R Markdown is a current project. We want to publish our code using Git or GitLab because we have a GitLab server. Um, we also want to use the Jupyter Notebooks more for teaching purposes, trying to um, com combine it for teaching, showing what we can do with the data from the Gezus panel. Uh, we are part of this pre-registration challenge you are uh, going to be witnessing in the next uh, hour, but we're also thinking about other pre-registration stuff, so just keep your eyes open. Hopefully, there'll be more news uh, soon. Um, what I'm doing is I'm trying out things within entire gazes. I'm trying out Git workshops and our Markdown workshops, and if they go well, then we think, okay, well, you, the, the public, can also use it, so just keep the training website uh, um, in mind, and we'll publish some trainings that I or other people from Jesus will give to teach open science to the broad research uh, community. With that, some links. There's one course already online on reproducible research in R. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to the submissions of the MCS Gezes Open Science uh, Pre Registration Challenge. Thanks. So we can take uh, one or two questions. If there are any, then go ahead. Okay. Can you talk more about the measures um, a database that you have? No. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I, I could try, but it probably won't work well. <laughs> the slides are already up online. Just you think it would be better if you just Google it and. Uh, before I get into troubles about saying the wrong uh, things. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um